Hi, everyone. Um, Hi, everyone. I um, I want to, I'm just going to start straight away to introduce you to the wonderful Louis. Louis is a friend and um, transpersonal psychotherapist. And um, I met Louis in a grieving session that he held um, very skillfully in a beautiful gathering called Wider Horizons. And uh, since then we've been collaborating and yeah, sharing moments of uh, sanity together. Hmm. And <laughs> hello, Louis. Hello. <laughs> in this moment of sanity. In this moment of sanity, yeah. Um, yeah, Louis, I would, first of all, I want to kind of to say why, why we're kind of sharing this moment. First of all, because mm. there was this idea that we realized that there is there is a kind of the personal grieving, but there's also the collective grieving. And part of this community cleanses and rejuvenation community thing that's going on, um, that you are more than welcome to get involved, is about exploring healing as a collective, not necessarily only as individuals, but of course, starting with the individual, but with this intention that we're doing it together collectively. So on March 12th to the 16th, we've got five days free community cleanse retreat. And Louis will hold space for us to grieve uh, together as collective. And grieving is a way to cleanse the soul, some ancients say. So, but they also say that it needs to be held by a whole community. So yeah, I would love, uh, Louis, if you can share with us tips, ways that we can, we can kind of deal with what's going on. Now it's very much in the collective, some of us losing loved ones, some of us losing our dreams, our jobs, different things. And yeah, what would you kind of suggest where, where to start with befriending grief when it's overwhelming? Mm. Well, thanks, uh, Rena, and I am um, excited if that is uh, the right word to use for being able to offer a grief space in the middle of a cleanse, because I think that will be really um, powerful, mm. especially having done the last one and um, without the without the grieving space found that incredibly powerful. So I'm excited about that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think, like, just it's important to sort of really establish that grief is something that we all experience and it can be an emotion that we feel over everyday things that don't go our way. Uh, it doesn't have to be. And typically we tend to associate it in this modern Western culture with losing someone we love. Mm. But actually it's really helpful to think about grief as this emotional energy that human beings experience just every day when things don't go our way, everyday disappointments. Mm. And when we have that orientation, uh, we can just sort of gently turn towards those moments on a day-to-day -day basis with tenderness. Just for example, like one exercise that can be really nice is just to reflect back on the last 24 hours and think of something that didn't go your way, a disappointment, something didn't go as you'd planned it to go and actually just create a space in your heart just to allow a little bit of that grief to come through and just to hold it with a sort of tender warm embrace and that's kind of a practice that you can do regularly and it's sort of a, a good name for it is just tending to or taking care of the grief and I think when we can start to do it in small ways, uh, that also helps us. It's like a training for when we have really big losses. And obviously there's a lot of big losses in the world at the moment, but we can be overwhelmed if we just try and go in at the deep end. So I think it's really important to sort of start small and build up. So for example, uh, just earlier today, I was doing my morning pages and um, this doesn't normally happen, by the way, when I do my morning pages, but just some stuff was just coming out that was uh, about some things in the last couple of days that haven't been going my way. 
and I just had part of my attention, what was going on in my body, in my emotional space. And I was just noticing that the grief was coming up to the surface and I was noticing and just sort of allowing it to be as I was writing these notes on the page. So simple, small, everyday things like that, I think can, um, can be a really good starting point. Maybe if you don't mind, uh, we could um, we could do a little exercise together just for five minutes, just, mm -hmm. just, you know, kind of to take that as the kind of how to tend that place that is yeah. so overwhelming. And the other question is that I had is that is in the old days, we just needed to, to deal with the grief of our families, maybe our tribe around 200 people. And now we need to grieve with global grief right there is like so much going on and we exposed to it like we didn't know what was going on in india or in china and now we know mm. what's going on so it's like adding more stress to our nervous system um and so what would you say how to deal with that and how to kind of know when it's your grief or when it's mm. something from the collective and you know to kind of how to deal with it because obviously for one nervous system it's impossible to grieve for a whole universe mm, that was a lovely uh, expression for one nervous system you can't grieve for the whole universe mm. um i actually think rena that um we've always been interconnected mm. on a global level mm -hmm. but what's different now is that we have the internet um, and we have globalization on the physical plane. So whereas we've always been connected um, with other beings in, in the planet on a, on a spiritual level, I would say, now we're connected more deeply on a physical level. So that brings a different level of, um, a different way of sensing into the sort of trauma and the grief that's going around in the world. It's, mm -hmm. I feel like it's more of a direct hit into the uh, nervous system mm. and it's also just much harder to protect our energetic boundaries mm. um, and I just think on a very simple level we do have to really take care of our energetic boundaries to mm. be able to uh, nurture what's going on for us internally personally whilst also acknowledging the fact that sometimes it's it's difficult to discern what is personal and what's collective i don't think there's like a very clear scientific answer of how to discern that like mm -hmm. the example i was sharing with you before rena about um how i've been getting up in the middle of the night mm -hmm. and i actually thought this could be my personal stuff mm -hmm. but this also could be collective stuff and i did a post in in the facebook group as i mentioned mm -hmm. a facebook group i'm a part of and it's literally been about 30 or 40 comments from people all saying, oh, my God, yes, I've been getting up in the middle of the night and I don't normally do that. And just that sharing of the experience that we're in it together has felt really reassuring to me. And a few other people said that felt reassuring as well. Um, I don't know if that answers the question, really, but that's just um, that's just what's coming up. Mm. Right. No, thank you. Liz. So if you can take us through even five minutes, just something, just a little moment of, of connecting with that, tending that place. Yeah, so um, just sitting comfortably, uh, taking a moment to let your eyes rest. And just letting your attention settle from wherever it's been today, letting it settle into your body. And it can help to just notice what's going on in your mind. If your mind feels busy right now or quiet and whatever type of energy you notice in your mind or around your mind, just allowing it to be as it is. Just allowing it to be.
And then you can let your attention drop a little bit deeper into your body, just noticing how your body feels in this moment. And again, whatever you're noticing in your body, just, just allowing it to be as it is. So we wanna just let go of the part of us that wants to fix and change things. And whatever you're sitting on, See if you can notice that connection between your legs and bum and whatever you're sitting on. And just see what it feels like just to let yourself be held. Just to let yourself be held. And then we can gently bring our attention to the center of our chest, our heart space. And I like to put a hand on my chest just to bring a sort of nurturing energy to that place, activating those qualities of the heart, like courage, compassion, forgiveness. And from this place, just with connection to the heart space, just see if you can um, bring to mind something from the last days. And ideally we want to start with something not too big, but something that perhaps you felt some grief over. And it can be something that didn't go your way. Maybe it was something that didn't go your way in a human connection or relationship or you didn't get a good night's sleep or um, something around work stuff. Some disappointment. And just as you tune into that, just allowing and opening the space in your heart for any sense of any grief, any tenderness that might be there. And we really don't need to force anything here. There is no right or wrong. Just really creating the space and giving permission to whatever is present for us. And as we give permission to whatever grief might be present in our hearts, we can also find a way to thank it, to acknowledge and appreciate the grief. Because really the grief is just a reminder of our human beingness. It's a reminder of our capacity for love and connection and for longing. So it's a really precious gift. And when you're ready, you can gently remove our hands from our chest, bringing your awareness back into the space. You can wiggle your fingers and toes a little bit. Have a little stretch if you like. Open your eyes whenever you're ready. Thank you very much, Louis. And really looking forward to experiment this collective grief with you together. On, I think it will be the 15th of March on the fourth day of the retreat when we're moving into kind of more using adaptogens, which are exactly that, to help the nervous system to deal with this 
huge amount of grief. So I really hope you will join us and um, to hold each other's hands and do it together. It's always easier together. Thank you so much, Lou, for being here. Thank you. Very My soon. pleasure. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Bye.